Are you ready? I was born ready. Okay. Well, welcome back to the Posh <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> this is your host, Nico. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know. Otherwise known as Nico Powerful on Twitter, YouTube, Twitch. That's about it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Polishing Podcast. You listen to it in places where you get podcasts. Most of the major ones. I don't know if the last episode ever updated to go on iTunes. It was everywhere else, but wasn't on iTunes. I don't even know how that works because that's the first thing I hooked it to. That's disrespectful. Yeah. But um, that's that's it for the plugs in the beginning. I'm already yawning. Yeah. We just got done streaming, so. It's also like the middle of the afternoon and we're both like sleepy as hell. <laughs> I mean, that's okay for me. I got to wake up hella early. That's true. It's not great for me. I still have to go teach. Yeah. But that's Allie. I'm Allie. I'm, I'm the his, co-host. I'm his wife. And wife. Co-host and wife. I like how you put co-host first. <laughs> co-host and of lesser importance, <laughs> wife. I never said that, but sure. I actually really like that I'm holding the mic right now because I feel like I can have more dynamic movement. This is what you get for marrying a theater kid. <laughs> and then literally giving me a microphone and a venue to speak. That's fine. You really messed up. You don't even know. You know you could just, you could have done stuff like this as well yeah but this is much easier well yeah this is much easier (laughs) anyway i'm Allie. yeah we lost the uh desk mount to her microphone the arm is fine yeah we just don't know where the mounting thing for the desk is and i really did we ever even separate those two parts i don't i mean yeah they don't go together like they only slot together like that no that's fine like scare the crap out of the cat yeah but she'll be fine <laughs> oh yeah well they just slide in like yeah that. so no idea where that went um that was just my water bottle for anyone who freaked out oh yeah yeah everything's fine um we'll have to find that eventually what? um <clears throat> no but yeah i don't know you moved the boom arm and then it was just gone yeah i don't know what happened we'll figure it out that's too bad We'll find it, because my arm will get tired of holding this. Oh, yeah. You're going to have to switch arms probably sure. multiple times. Are you doing that again? I will stop you. The cats are misbehaving today. The girls are fighting. <laughs> the girls are... And they were roommates. <laughs> but uh, are we still going to talk about The Witcher today? I would love to. Then, yeah, we can do that. Amazing. I found out that several of my students are really into The Witcher, which bodes well for this semester. Oh, have they seen your slides yet? Yeah, the ones I was working on the other night. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the ones that knew appreciated it. Everyone else, I was like, I'll, this is just Henry Cavill. <laughs> and they were like, appreciate that. <laughs> and fine. I was like, all right, sounds good. We're Anyone who it. appreciates the male form. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we watched it, I don't know, like a day or two after it dropped. Yeah. And since you like the binge stuff, we finished it. Yeah, pretty quickly. Yeah. In like I mean, two days. Isn't it only like, Seven, nine episodes. I'm not sure how many episodes it is because we were just like, all right, next one, next one, next one. You were all like, next one, next one, next <laughs> I don't one. know. You weren't complaining about any of that, though. So. No, we did stop, and then, then you were like, I really want to watch it. And I was like, if we don't watch it, then she's going to just watch it without me, and I'll never watch it. It's true. Because that's how it happens. Yep. I just don't like binging shows. Yeah. So, but which are how many episodes eight eight okay that's what it says on here yeah it says eight yeah so um i want to be very clear that i've interacted with exactly zero witcher content prior to watching the show i had only ever seen like little bits of you playing Mm -hmm. the games um which i'm currently streaming witcher 3 all the way through right so if you want to like watch that yeah which is is the place to be yeah um also i got worried about all the boobies because there's a lot of boobies in it mm. but i reread the guidelines because brunswick shout out uh what up, brunswick? <laughs> came into my chat and was like i didn't know this was allowed and i was like i hadn't been banned yet so but then i looked it up and it's like as long as if there's nudity in a game but it's not focused on the nudity and mm. you as the streamer don't focus in on it or stay in the areas with like right outside of um basically they're like if you're not doing b- being gratuitous yeah about the boobies yeah it's like if there are boobies in cutscenes, that's you there's know there's nothing you can do about that yeah like, but if you all it. of a sudden 
pause the game in some way, shape, or form. Stare at the titties. Yeah, and then, like put your face cam right next to a nipple. <laughs> like, yeah, then you're yeah. you could get banned for that. Yeah, but which if, feels fair. Yeah, like that's one of those lines that like should be flexible. Yeah, but like it's it's like. Uh, what is that? There was like some judge talking about obscenity, mm -hmm. like ruling on what is obscene and what isn't. And mm -hmm. he was like, I mean, you know it when you see it. Yeah. Which feels like shaky ground for a legal basis, but makes sense for like a policy for a platform of yeah. like, I mean, there will be a shade of difference between yeah. somebody like, playing the game. It's like, oh, boobies. And then somebody who's like, oh, fucking titties, though. Yeah. Or just Stop. playing like a sex video game. Well, the, those are banned. Yeah. There's a there's a list of banned that. games, yeah, that uh, that are either based wholly around just sex or anything, sexual violence, mm. uh, racism, and intolerance and stuff like that. Shout out to Twitch, that's a good ass policy. Yeah, there's a list of games that are just straight up banned if they're like too much sex stuff. The more I learn about Twitch, the more I feel like it's the preferred platform for a lot of things. I mean, a lot of the streaming sites do the same thing. Like, if oh, you go, I yeah, if I, I mean, mean, I just know that like YouTube is a piece of garbage mostly. Well, yeah, but it's always been that way. Yeah, that's fair. It's never. I mean, it's you could say it's been a good platform in the past, but it's never been like great. No. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just common sense stuff. Like a lot of the games that are banned are just. It's just like okay, right? Like. <laughs> uh, <laughs> The one game on there that's banned that's kind of funny is it's called genital jousting. It's about penis that <laughs> you just run them into that's each other. That's incredible. But that's bad. But I could see a world where like <laughs> the game is just penises. Yeah. This I mean, I, now I want to play the game. It's But hilarious. I don't know that I need to show the world me playing it. Like, I feel like I can just play it and yeah. enjoy it in the privacy of my own home. Yeah. But, At um, parties with friends, maybe. Yeah. But. This got this got, went a little sideways, but it did. but I just wanted to reread that policy because mm. I was like, well, shit. Yes, <laughs> right? in case. I was like, but I have got. I've just been uncomfortable every time it's done one of those scenes. I'm just yeah. like, eh, all right, come on. Yeah. Because there's this point where it's like, yeah, Geralt and Yen fuck a lot. We get it. Like, <laughs> we just, get it. They fuck. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, good for them. Yeah. I hope they're having fun. Yeah, but um, also the only because you said like you haven't done anything with anything I've never interacted with but, uh, any witcher content prior yeah, to the show i mean to uh, before the show like it's based on books if you didn't know somehow yeah. the witcher games are sequels to the books mm -hmm. and the books were originally published in polish yeah they're polish they're polish which and, is interesting yeah and i don't even know that they were i think it was not that long ago that all of them were translated to english because mm. before there was no point mm -hmm. before the games and stuff um there was also people made it a bigger deal than it actually was the author originally when he gave the property to the developer cd project red he was like oh yeah i'll take like 15 grand and that's about it for sales because he he his view of video games is like oh they're not big things they're not popular no. especially back when he first signed the deal right but polish government has a thing in it where if you negotiated a deal and you think you've been um not misled or anything but it's mm. like oh this it turns out the deal i took was shitty you could go back and renegotiate and it's not like this big scandal kind of thing in right. poland whereas it would be in like america because it's mm. like oh no you signed a contract your deal is right. shitty you got to deal with that deal in poland it, or it's it, i know it's at least Poland. I don't know if it's like in, in Europe. In the EU kind of situation. Yeah. But that happened recently. They renegotiated CD Projekt Red. Still has, like, they re-upped so they can make more Witcher games if they wanted. I don't nice. know that they're, if they would do a Witcher 4. Because mm. as far as I know, the Witcher 3 is kind of like, that's like the end. the end. But I don't. Maybe more games in the universe or. Yeah. Because they already did a game in the universe called Thronebreaker. But it's so in within Witcher 3 and then there was this game called Gwent. It's a card game you can play. Hmm. Thronebreaker is a Gwent game huh. with a story. They cool. also made a Gwent like game that's just you can play people and win Gwent. That's neat. Yeah. So like they've done a little bit outside of just Geralt's story, but yeah. not but not really. a ton. Yeah. I mean, and there's lots of other characters who are super interesting. Yeah, because even in the novelization and stuff, he's Geralt's not the well, he's like one of the main characters, but he's right. not the main character. And if the books and the games are at all like the show, 
there's like large gaps of time that they'll like talk about but not necessarily show well yeah because i mean in the games it's the first game's a sequel to the last book yeah and it literally like one of the things they did is like oh Geralt has amnesia so you learn about stuff that happened because people are telling you about what you've done before right because before they i mean there was no way they were like oh hey yeah we should start a game and make people think they know everything that's happened in the Mm. books at this point because it's a polish book who's read it like it you know and if you want a wider audience yeah that's not gonna happen yeah so that's super interesting and that's actually one of the things i've never played the the first game you've never played the first game no i've only played the second and i'm trying to beat the third finally after five years getting distracted by side quests no i just kept well i did that and then eventually i just was like all right i don't want to play anymore Mm. like i just lose interest in the game and move on to something else yeah but now, because of the show, I'm more heavily interested in the characters. Which is awesome. Yeah. It's because the characters are, are done really well, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, there are, like, things I have questions about, but it's yeah. more like questions than critiques, necessarily. Yeah. Like, I think one of the things I liked the most was that it did, like, a good job of, like, enough storytelling without talking at you in these, like, long, like... And now it is exposition time and having like episodes of exposition. Oh, mm. that's cute. Yeah, we did this the first time and yeah. had it done in since. I got but that for you. That's true. The little sloth. Hey, sloth me. Oh, Jesus. Sloths are awesome. What I love about them is that they can starve to death even if they eat because <sighs> their digestive systems move so slowly. They're so dumb. I'm obsessed. I just think it's funny that they can be like, oh, man, I haven't eaten. Meh. And then if I'd be like, all right, I'm going to eat. And then it's too late. And then it's too late. It doesn't matter. Because if I go, oh, man, I haven't eaten. Uh, I got another hour before I go home. I'll be all right. Right. Then I'm all right. <laughs> if you were a sloth, you'd die. Yeah. That is incredible. I'm obsessed with that. <laughs> um, I love animals that should not exist, but do. Um, But yeah, I, I thought it was like enough. It was some takes I saw on Twitter were about like, Oh, that just looks like a generic fantasy series. Haven't we had enough of those? And then also that person not like really <laughs> right. Like I don't think so at all. There's well, like think about. <laughs> I think everyone just has a Game of Thrones hangover. Yeah, but even Game of Thrones wasn't like it was Witcher. barely fantasy. Yeah, well, I mean, like it's fantasy, but it's not like high fantasy. The mm. books are, but you know. But the show D and D, we're like mm, we took mm. that out. Yeah, there's not as much magic in the world or anything. Right. But The Witcher show, it literally starts with Geralt hunting a... What's that? Nikimura? Kikimura. Kikimura, yeah. And they're like, oh, okay, there's weird fucking monsters in this. Also, his eyes are black and the veins are, like, coming out of... Like, you can see the veins from his eyes just going from that. There's, like, a very casual relationship with the supernatural. (laughs) Yeah in the show that feels more like proper high fantasy to me Mm -hmm. than something like game of thrones because even in the books like i was saying because i'm I'm listening to the audiobook of the first game of thrones book um i've read the physical thing before but um i'm reading the audiobook now and we have the five current ones right yeah 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 we have all five of the ones that are out um uh, one day the sixth one will one day um, Look, he writes on a typewriter, and sometimes he doesn't write. So. You know what? Honestly, <laughs> hell yeah. He's like, fuck you. If I die, I die. <laughs> Y'all yeah. can kiss my ass. And every time I somebody says that. something about He's like, it. I don't owe you shit. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I don't give a shit. It'll take longer it. now. I love it. That's incredible. Um, As much as I like want the next book, I'm like, yeah. yeah, but I respect that. Anyway, so I'm listening to the first book, and it's like in the first couple of chapters, they talk about... Like magicians in the streets of King's Landing, hmm. like performing actual magic, hmm. just like in places. Like it's not, I don't know. It's not so like the only magic is dragons. Yeah, and like the one witch lady. Yeah, because like that's like, <laughs> really all that you see, except for that like one blue lipped guy when oh, he yeah. kidnaps a dragon and even that it seems like i it don't know are there d- hallucinogens like what's the yeah it didn't really seem like magic at all right i don't know and that's and that sucks because one of the coolest things about the world building there is the magic like the ch- children of the forest are literally magical and they mm. show one of them for like two scenes 
that where Bran is beyond the wall and it dies. Yeah. And I'm like, we don't even get to see all the cool shit that Bran can see. Yeah. When he becomes the, the raven or whatever. The, the three-eyed raven. The three-eyed raven. We don't even get to see all that cool shit. But anyway, the witcher like has the Careful cool with shit. swinging the mic. Because <laughs> those sw- that, that'll make noise. Oh. Yeah. It'll be like... Pfft. Sorry, team. Yeah. Um, She's just being... If you can't see... Patreon.com slash the podcast. Um, <laughs> Five dollar tier. Uh, Do she, it. Because like, we mentioned the ma- ma- the arm and desk mount mm. and stuff. Allie's physically holding the microphone. If you hear any fast noises, <laughs> it's because she's being very animated. I am naturally a very expressive person. That's true. And I move my hands a lot when I speak. And she's Italian. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's sorry, surprising. Dude. I don't move my hands more when I do the podcast, but I think it's because I'm still not used to the camera. That too. Yeah. Cause I usually move my hands a lot. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You gesture with your hands quite a bit when you talk. Yeah. It's hard not to. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know how to not see. I just did it then. Like, what is, <laughs> what is this even? I don't know, but like I just I body know. language. And I also think teaching like makes me very conscious of like my body language while well, I talk. You also um, did drama. In yeah, theater. I did theater. Yeah. So you're. I'm just like a little more aware of like be yeah. like what I look like and what gesture. Like I don't know. I just gesture more naturally when I'm being watched. Yeah. If that makes sense. Um. Well, yeah. But yeah, so The Witcher has all those cool fantasy things that yeah. I like, one and in I, little ways, like it's not always a huge deal. Yeah. Well, one thing I read, um, I think it was on the Rotten Tomatoes thing, which top critic score is wrong, um, mm-hmm. was like. Some people were compa- like like comparing it to Game of Thrones with a mix of like either Hercules or Xena. Oh, I love that comparison. I know you would because you like both of those shows or all three of them, I guess. Yeah, I like but, all three of those shows. But yeah, I, there's a very Xena esque characterization of Geralt. Like Xena gets talked about like, oh, so you don't have any feelings like, oh, you don't have a soul. Oh, you're this evil dark person. But also, oh, God, we need you. There's an invading army. Yeah. Right. Um, and as like. Insert shrug gif. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, she has sort of a different and oftentimes higher morality than the villagers she's protecting. Yeah. Um, in that she understands people can change and won't just engage in like wanton slaughter. Mm hmm. But I think a lot of the ways the shots are set up are very reminiscent of Hercules in some ways just because they're... But sometimes Geralt will want and slaughter. <laughs> right, which Hercules didn't really do. But a lot of fight choreography then really wasn't just about like looking at all the ways you can murder people. Yeah. Well, did you know they the that scene in the first episode is a reshoot? What? Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, the... Um... The first, the battle in Blaviken. Yeah, where he gets the title Butcher of Blaviken. Uh, Which is so good that fight scene is chef's kiss yeah Perfect. the um uh, what is it the what do i call this person the fight coordinator for mission mm-hmm. impossible oh da, 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 that he worked with when henry cavill was in the mission possible movie he Reloading helped his arms yeah he yeah. helped <laughs> make that scene both him and henry cavill sat down and were like we want to make this cool but also meaningful to the story and yeah. what it means and that's one of the coolest things about the show is that, like, everything feels meaningful and very intentional. Mm. And that's, I think, what bothered me the most about some of the critiques that you said you found was, like, people who were watching, like, random episodes throughout the season. Yeah. And then writing that, a critique. And it's like, well, you missed all of the little touches. That and you miss giant swaths of time because it time right. skips a shit ton. And then they're like, ah, it's confusing. I'm like, no, you're confused. That's not the same thing. Yeah. And you don't <laughs> even get introduced to Yennefer until episode two. So if you go from episode right. one to episode five. You're like, who is this bitch? Yeah. Like, I just yeah it doesn't make any sense to skip around and it's not that much time if your job is to review a tv show that only has eight episodes episodes, take a saturday yeah and it's an hour in each like there are way longer shows people review whole seasons of cw shows with 25 (sighs) episodes in each friggin season that if you watch episode one episode five episode 10 episode 15 you know what that's fair you might not even miss anything if you do it 
right? Depending on the show. Yeah. Post shows. But it's fine. <laughs> it's wild. They're still great. This is my segue into mentioning Riverdale for the, this episode of the oh, podcast. Jesus. And we'll return to The Witcher immediately, but I just wanted to know. Um, <laughs> is it because it's a CW show? <laughs> That's it? Yep. God damn it. But. I'm upset. But yeah, um, everything feels really important. And then when I started rewatching it with a friend of mine, um, I noticed even more. Like it felt worth watching a second time and i was getting all of the things like a good any good show that fucks with time yeah right you watch it through one time and then you start from the beginning again and you notice all the ways that it fits together even more yeah but we also sat down to watch it knowing that they were skipping through time based on the reviews that you were reading uh i don't remember that but well you mentioned them before we even watched it I just remember because Reddit on r slash television had a big mm. thing about how was it EW or something. Mm. One of their reviewers were supposed to watch the first five episodes, which is over half the show. Right. The fact that they got access to that many early is kind of wild. You get to see I think more that's than half typical, the show. Though. I I don't like the first five episodes of a show get released for critique. Yeah, but that's like it's one thing. It's the first five episodes of like The Flash or right. something like that. But yeah. this is like oh here's more than half of the season <laughs> that would be like if they were like here's 12 episodes of riverdale no 15 <laughs> yeah but um they don't have 30 episodes i said more than half oh right that's true yeah like 15 episodes yeah first of all that's too much you, you just... try, if you told me to sit down and watch 15 <laughs> episodes for an early critique i'd be like i'd rather <laughs> fucking not but um i mean i'll take the money so yes i will watch whatever quality of television i don't know that's too like because you're probably gonna have to watch more than one show at at a time that's a lot that starts to pile up real fast people don't review that many new shows at a time like there's season there's parts of the year during like pilot season and stuff oh my god you can see her little butt oh man because she got the booty under there because i i messed with the blanket on the radiator so it's not messed up basically and Mm -hmm. actually blocks the heat better so it's not as long so she's trying her best to get under there anyway she loves to be between the blanket and the radiator yeah it's her favorite thing sorry i interrupted it's okay um and i want to specifically talk about the women of the show because i just it's so refreshing beer Oh, yeah. First of all, Calanthe is everything. <laughs> She's a crazy bitch, and I love her. Um, all of the women in that show are allowed to be things. A very ruthless queen. Yeah. Because apparently and, she just slaughtered people on the regular. And, like, how <laughs> often do we see a ruthless queen who's not also the villain? Because yeah. Calanthe is in no way the villain. Mm-hmm. Like, she definitely makes mistakes, but I don't think she comes off as, like, an evil person or character. Yeah, one of the little misgivings people give a little critique is that in the books and stuff no one kingdom is like the good guy it's like full test fucked his sister that shit's weird got her pregnant and also weird all that stuff happened yeah. and tamaria calanthe basically goes out and just slaughters civilians on the regular to keep them under control yep Nilfgaard wants to conquer the north but in this it's like they've made Nilfgaard like the de facto bad guy but we don't in the shitty thing is we don't really see anything like because when they take over um Sintra Mm -hmm. like when they do that whole siege they're like oh they don't leave any prisoners they only kill everybody it's like well then what the fuck's the point in expanding an empire that doesn't make any sense I'm just gonna have the same 10 dudes guarding ever more expansive land yeah like that's not practical yeah and it's like if since we're seeing it from the eyes of like Siri, Geralt, Yennefer like everybody who's basically not on their side it Mm -hmm. would make sense from their perspective to be like they're bad they kill people yeah because later on we see the scene with Yennefer and the one guy um the sorcerer what's his name the one that she sleeps with in the beginning yeah do you remember his name i don't remember Istrid? Istrid. is that it yep okay when he's in the little like nilfgaard camp doing his right. archaeology stuff he's like uh look at all this cool shit i get to find yeah and nobody was like being whipped or anything they were just right. working though it does seem like they're willing to sacrifice sorcerers because we see like fringilla like literally murder that sorcerer oh yeah just rip a dude open to figure yeah. out where siri is and yeah. she was right it worked real well right, but that works. guy definitely died yeah um and we know by the end of the series that they're doing you know dark magic 
whatever that is. Yeah, black magic, which black just magic, usually yeah. in anything is like necromancy. Right. Blood, blood magic, magic. Something. And I would say what she did like is a form of blood magic. Yeah, that wasn't not blood magic. They they ate a piece of a person and then he got cutting from that nave shit, to chops. That shit was nasty. Yeah. But it was awesome. Um, yeah. And yeah, so they definitely want to characterize Nilfgaard as evil. Yeah, it's just like they're bad zealots. Definitely, like, they'll stop power? at nothing to yeah. get power. Um, but even that is kind of interesting, right? Because then, like, how different is that from Calanthe? I mean, she wasn't expanding. She how was different just, is that you know. from Stregobor, who's a whole asshole? Yeah. Like, it's interesting. It just, yeah. like, brings a lot of questions in. And they do enough to build up various parts of society, various characters, yeah. various parts of the cultures of the different places they are without like over explaining enough that I, I left being like, Oh wow. I really want to read the books and I want to play the games. Like I yeah. actually really want to know more about this world yeah. and these characters, which is really cool. And you know, the books will be a little more useful than the games, but you know, yeah, that's fair. Cause um, I would, I don't know if the series is going to end the same way the books do. Right. And then be like, okay, now we're going to adapt the story of the games to the show. Mm -hmm. but they could. Like, there's no reason they couldn't. Yeah. But, you I know, mean, I have no idea. It entirely on what yeah. they want to do. Yeah. And it would be cool if they did some similar stuff and some different stuff. Yeah. Um, I'd be interested in what they decide. Because it yeah. seems like they're so able technically to Technically, I've already really spoiled cool. the end of the show. If I, right. Because <laughs> I told you how the first <laughs> game starts. Right. Um, so, spoiler alert, if you don't want to know yeah. how the series, the season, like the whole Witcher show might end, skip like 30 seconds ahead. I'm not going to dwell on it too long. Mm -hmm. But the first game starts after Geralt wakes up from amnesia. He gets put, brought back to Kaer Morhen, and he later on finds out that him and Yennefer basically died because of a like racial tensions in a city you know got to uh brought to a boiling point hmm. humans wanted to kill non-humans Geralt and Yennefer got involved and a guy ran up and stabbed Geralt with a pitchfork without him really paying attention Jesus and him and Yennefer die and that's apparently how the books end and that's where they use the jumping off point for the games hmm. which is why Yennefer is not even in the first two games hmm. So when I first played the third game, I was very confused. I was like, who's this? I don't know who this girl is. <laughs> who is this woman? That girl's like looking at like, what up? But I'm hey. like, it, but it is confusing because Triss in the second game is like his love interest. Oh, uh, okay. And it's not great because that meant she took advantage of the fact that he had amnesia. Yeah, they go into that. And Triss is like, I feel really bad about that. And he's like, I didn't know I was in love with someone else. It's not like. Right. And, but she's like, yeah, but I did. Right. <laughs> Shitty on her part. <laughs> yeah. But she could be better, Altris. I'm disappointed in you. Yeah. So I'm also wondering if what they're going to do with her in the show, because in the book, she's a side character. Hmm. In the game, she's like a main character for the first two games. Hmm. And so I'm like, well. And in the show, they gave her like not a ton of material, but she gets like one episode where it's really just her and Geralt. Yeah. And then a couple episodes where she like pops up. And then the last episode, she's like in that big battle. Yeah. So she gets some stuff. And I thought it was really interesting. I thought like the whole, all the different like ways that the sorcerers were trained and how they interacted was super interesting. Yeah. I was like, oh, so those weird little black eel thingamajigs. Whatever the fuck they Mind are. I mean, I know they're a bunch of, like, I guess failed magic students, but still like that's. Well, no, I don't know about those things. Oh, yeah. Uh, you meant the other, the things that. Look, I just said little black things. eels things, yeah. But Leeches. The, but the, the eels that were in the water looked black. I don't know. They're yellow. Oh, yeah, you're right. Do we need to get your eyes checked? No, I just need a nap. <laughs> I'm so tired. I woke up early and went to the DMV today, so I'm I gotta wake up early together. and go to work tomorrow. The struggle is real. <sighs> it's very real. God, I don't wanna. Don't do it. Just kidding. Please do it. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't want to. I don't want to either, so it's fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but the women in the show get to do and be things that yeah. I haven't seen a lot of women get to do and be on mm -hmm. screen. You know, Calanthe is, like, ruthless without being deeply evil, right? Like, she's not Cersei Lannister. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, And she very easily could be, I think. I mean, at least Cersei's fall made sense within the show. She lost all of her children, so she's like, no, I don't really give a shit about anyone anymore. Right. 
But even in the that books, been like, better too, I literally just listened to the chapter where Tyrion is in the sky cells in the uh, Vale. Wait, I got a question for you. Yeah. When they talk about how Tyrion does a flip to meet Jon Snow, did you imagine Peter Dinklage <laughs> yes, doing a flip? I did. Because <laughs> I could not picture that. I was like... <laughs> also, why the fuck? What? They they talk about how it's hard for him to walk. Why is he doing flips? <laughs> well, and apparently, like, in, in the world of Game of Thrones... The um, sorry to sidetrack. No, you. no, you're That's totally just fine. Like, <laughs> a lot of folks who have dwarfism, like him, mm. end up in circuses. So it's like expected that they're like acrobats. But it's so weird. And I don't, I don't know why he's an acrobat. He's a Lannister. He's a nobleman. I yeah. don't know where he would have learned to do such. Yeah, a thing. Yeah, he's an outcast within his family, but he still got right. money and stuff. Like <laughs> it's not like, like they were like, and like go to the circus. Like that it's didn't still happen. It's a big deal that he gets kidnapped by Catelyn Stark. Like yeah. Tywin is like, listen, I don't like my son, but you're not allowed to touch him. Yeah. So he's like, if anybody kills him, I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> not like some random lady from the north. Yeah. Um, but in the chapter where he's in the sky cells, he's like thinking, he's trying to figure out a plan that he eventually puts in place. But he's like, you know, oh well, if Cersei were smart, if she were clever enough, she would and this is narrated from his perspective, which is important too, but it feels like Tyrion, in a lot of ways, is one of the few characters that seems to know what the fuck is happening <laughs> in the show and in the books. Yeah. Um, he seems to be, like, on the smarter end. Yeah. But he's like, oh, well, if Cersei is clever enough, she'll demand that they try, that they try me in front of Robert Baratheon and yeah. not here in the Vale. And then he's like, but, you know, Cersei's pride has always been more important than making the smart move. And Jamie, you know, while loyal, while brave, he's not very smart. Yeah. Um, but the show seemed to make Cersei a lot smarter than she was up mm. until the end, which I don't even want to talk about. <laughs> but they built her up as this, like, mastermind, where in the books, I think she's, like, she, she comes across as, like, evil, like, cutthroat, but not particularly smart. No. Yeah. Like Tyrion is like, oh, so they killed John Aaron, and then sent some douchebag with my knife to go kill Bran. Like that's sloppy as fuck. Like yeah. John Aaron was an old dude. If he got an illness and died, even if people questioned it, there's no fucking proof of what happened. Yeah. But then you give some dude, some thug an or, or an ornate dagger, right? And people are like, well, that doesn't make sense, right? Just give him a cleaver. <laughs> Yeah, it's very strange. It's very weird. Yeah. Um, so I, also, I think that we're not doing an episode by episode breakdown, just in case you were wondering yeah, from the beginning. We're, we're 30 it. minutes in, but I just figured yeah, I'd feels, let you know. It feels important to know that we're not organizing this in any fashion. Yeah. Um, That's how this goes. But yeah, so like Calanthe doesn't get the Cersei treatment, of like having this like overblown intelligence so that she seems even more evil and calculating, yeah. um, which again the writers of game of thrones then tanked it at the very end where she has no secret strategy i mean i don't at all like why i to me i still don't see why she would have a secret strategy she's like i fortified the walls we built these giant fucking ballistas to take out the dragons we have these boats and then daenerys was just like yeah well this one dragon's supposed to live until the end so <laughs> plot reasons <laughs> i burned through all this and maybe that's what it was is like daenerys didn't have to work hard enough for me it was well, like all this I think build the up biggest problem and then this bitch just went i think the, the biggest problem is that they killed the dragon the dragons off by being like gotcha killed a dragon like it wasn't like an earned thing it's just like that dragon's dead now oh yeah we're just flying around that dragon's dead right. now it's not there was yeah. no like the only thing reason they killed the dragons was because well i mean if she has three there's no tension then that's it but even when she has one there's no tension like it's like you just know he's wearing plot armor well yeah but it been the beginning of the episode i wouldn't have said that because well, it's like they have row the entire king's landing wall has all of those like ballista i'm like well i don't know he could die I don't, they've randomly dropped the other dragons out of the yeah, sky that's fair. But and I I think the real reason yeah. why the those two dragons had air quotes yeah. to die is because there's a real problem where Hollywood writers genuinely don't know how to write women as 
strong or intelligent or powerful without having them suffer horrible trauma first. Yeah. So like the like we we can't believe that Daenerys is powerful until she overcomes the grief of losing what are effectively her children, her pets, her strongest weapons. Yeah. Whereas the difference between like Calanthe and She's Daenerys just queen. Right. Calanthe's like I'm fucking queen, bitch. Yeah. The only thing she does is like she wants to prove to everybody that even though like there are kings everywhere and right. all these men's traditions. She keeps trying to be like, oh, fuck destiny, because right. that's like what men talk about. And it keep, it always bites her in the ass. It's like, right. no, you can't. Destiny's not a man thing. <laughs> right. This destiny is an everybody doesn't thing. doesn't have a gender situation. Like, this is. But it's interesting because yeah. it's like it's like we don't have to have a backstory wherein she's oppressed her whole life. No, and like, she's just a warrior. We don't from have to witness her sexual assault yeah. or something. And they don't even hint at those things. You just the minute she walks in, she's like, Bruh! and like throws her glove. Well, and that random that's dude down the line. The first time we see her, she's doing queen things. Oh, right. Either way, like, yeah. we sh see her as regal, and then we see her as arrogant, and she just kind of gets to be those things, right? And, like, yeah. Siri gets to act like a kid yeah, and gets to just be a little girl, and that's kind of lovely. A little ragamuffin when she's, we first see her. She's a little, 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 she's like a little troublemaker. She's so cute. She's disguised. Got yeah. all of her hair in one hat. Yeah. Looking like Oliver Twist in that motherfucker. It's so cute. <laughs> it's too bad she didn't have all of her hair in two hats. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> incredible. Two hats. Um, uh, oh, she's weird. Yeah. But we got to play, what is it, Knuckles? Or what do they call it? Knuckle Bones. Yeah, we got to play Knuckle Bones with her because yeah. we got no one else to play with. Yeah. So. And she kills those kids later. <laughs> yeah. And then Yennefer is like sometimes deeply villainous. Oh, yeah. She's. Like, even playing through the game, like, I, so in the third game, you choose, like, Yennefer or Triss, Ooh. and if you try to do both, you end up with no one, because they're still friends. Because <laughs> so, they will talk. There's a, there's a funny scene <laughs> in where- In fact, sorcerers can read minds in this universe, so- <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of times Ooh. where Yennefer reads Geralt's mind, he's like, I hate when you do that. <laughs> he doesn't like it. Hilarious. But uh, there's He's like, even I don't think my own thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> no, he does. He just doesn't like other people thinking them as well. Big Scorpio. Energy. <laughs> my friend Dagon is convinced that Geralt is a Scorpio. I mean, and we looked it up. The first game, which is when a lot of people have decided his birthday is, is in late October, making him a Scorpio. Well, what about when the first book was published? I don't know. I didn't look that up. Yeah. I mean, depending on who you ask, one of those is more. Right. But apparently it's like a big mystery in the universe. Like, we don't actually know when he was born. Well, yeah, because, I mean, witchers also live all, like, long as hell. Yeah, and that's another cool thing about the the mythology around it. Like, we actually don't know how old Yennefer and Geralt are. Uh, yeah. Which no. is super interesting. I think it's, uh, in an interview or something, the actress has said, like, will you meet Yennefer when she's, like, 14? Right. But then, like, but we, we don't, don't know when that takes place. Yeah, we don't know, like, what year it is. Right. How long from then does she meet Istrid? Mm -hmm. And then, well, I mean, she meets Istrid the same day we see her. But, right. you know, after that, like, how long after that they start banging? That's weird. How long after that do they, does she, like, ascend? Yeah. Like, we have no sense of how long that takes. Yeah, which we is don't know how long. Yeah. Like, you know, she's... time passes without them needing to put, like, 10 years later or yeah. whatever it's like which apparently some people didn't like because they were like i don't know what's going on but, but for they, me it's like it doesn't fucking matter if it's 10 years if it's 15 years if it's six months it does either way well i know some people were like well then when how old was yeah skier when they met because nah. that that like when you're trying to keep singing about abortions i don't know damn that's right he was <laughs> 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 the witcher said reproductive rights <laughs> <laughs> and then he got pelted with food that he kept, <laughs> that he kept. <laughs> you can't deny men with bread in his pants <laughs> incredible writing but uh it's funny that because like because that's one of the people's things it's like well what about roach and it's like well canonically roach is just what he calls every horse he has oh yeah as we were re-watching with my friend i noticed that there was a horse in the first episode that was definitely not his horse in the second episode. Like, they have different patterns. They're similar color. Like, they're both brown, but their legs were different. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I mean. Yeah, that, horses die. Yeah, like, horses die. And he probably just looked for another brown horse and was like, Roach. Yeah, he calls every horse he owns Roach. And that checks Boy out. Boy or girl ho like, horse. Yeah. 
And it's also it also in some ways is hilarious because that kind of means that like Geralt's trolling people. Like, do people think he has an immortal horse? <laughs> That's incredible. They might. I, yeah. And so people are like, oh yeah, he rides this horse roach that he's ridden in a battle since before he became the butcher of Blaviken. Like that's <laughs> hilarious. But meanwhile, he's like, "Oh yeah, I get a new horse every five years." Like <laughs> they either die of old age or you know bad things happen. Right. Because I hunt monsters. Right. <laughs> Horses sometimes. He he can know. only convince so many people not to touch Roach. Yeah. Don't touch Roach. <laughs> it's incredible. But that's when I know people like are like, "Well, how many years has it been since?" he met Yaskier because it's like we get one thing where Yennefer starts to talk about his crow's feet in mm-hmm. his eyes but that's like the only thing it's yeah. like we don't I don't know if it goes as far like if the timeline goes as far as the games it's like well th- he should be like maybe in his 40s or something at that point yeah like, da- like Yaskier specifically I, I'll keep almost calling him Dandelion because that's his name in the games yeah Um, but but it's kind of interesting because yeah. it's like they make comments about him aging yeah. but it doesn't really matter the particulars of how old he is like in yeah. fact it makes me think of the times when i've seen characters have their sort of exposition mm. and it feels even more hamstrung than when people be like well i'm 17 and i know everything like no people don't <laughs> especially once you're an adult you don't go around like talking about how old you are well yeah i get that like it doesn't make sense to just bring up like Right, it in feels really unnatural. Yeah, and also like they're living in, they are fucking on the road. How do they fucking know when their birthday is? Like we, you know, like who knows how fucking old he is? And it's also immaterial. And that's what I kind of like is like this idea that like I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Time has passed. Anyway, yeah. well, moving on to the important shit. There's a say, dragon. For two of our main characters, <laughs> it doesn't matter it how literally long. Literally doesn't matter. Yeah, Yennefer will I don't think ever age. Yeah, and then Geralt ages way the hell slower and yeah. he's only got white hair because i think have the mutations that his body went through gave him white hair yeah so but, like there's no way to tell yeah really because he doesn't he's not gonna gray when he gets older he's right. already got white hair yeah so maybe his like eyebrow hairs or something no he's got i mean he should have white eyebrow hairs Does he? his facial hair grows in dark maybe that'll no mm-hmm. yeah in the game his, all of his hair is white that's so fascinating does he have white pubes you might not know this. No, because I assume don't. if all of his hair is white, then all of it is white. Yeah, I mean they don't show his pubes, so no, I don't know. We I mean it should equ- be. We need some equality in this bitch. <laughs> that was. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a mod. <laughs> right, <laughs> Geralt Dong mod, because you know you wanted to see it. Oh I was yeah, like, I didn't, but you mean sure. he's slinging it to everybody, so you might as well <laughs> get a peek. Um, and yeah, and Henry Cavill is so good. Yeah. It almost goes without saying how good he is because he's just it just seems such a natural fit. Yeah. That moment when he's on the mountain with Yennefer and she says something and he's like, hmm. And then he's like, oh, fuck. (laughs) It's like it feels so interesting because it feels it almost takes me out of the show because it's so genuine. Mm. I'm like, this looks like a like an outtake (laughs) because it feels so natural. Yeah. Um. And he just plays this character like with all of the sort of like heightened power and the rage and the fighting skills, but also like the humor and the sex appeal and the sadness. Like when Renfri dies, like my heart really fucking breaks for Henry Cavill. He was a sad boy. I was like, oh, no. And he takes the thing. The, the little, brooch. The, the brooch. I was like. Oh. He puts it on a sword later. And I'm like, he wants to remember her yeah. when it seems like there's very little he wants to hold on to in his life. And yeah. that's like really, even in the first episode, it was really meaningful. Yeah. Like, I know something I read about like the book and that the books, the scene is different ugh. when she's dying. Uh, he doesn't kill her from like really close range. Like he cuts her neck, I think, or something. But as she's bleeding out, she like cries out for him, but he stands away from her. And when, like, when she finally, like, dies, she drops the dagger. So it's like she was just going to get him if mm-hmm. he got close yeah. and he knew it. But in the show, during their fight, she pulls the dagger much faster. Right. And so. has some very cool fight choreography with, like, a sword and a dagger. Yeah. That shit is awesome. But also Geralt catching the dagger and <laughs> just being like, nah. Nah. 
Not th- today. Yeah, because I've watched the interview of Henry Cavill talking about that scene specifically. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, we wanted to get two different things across from the beginning, like half of the fight and the second half of the fight. Mm. Like the beginning half, it's much more aggressive and faster because he's got one goal in mind and it's just to kill all those guys. Mm-hmm. The second half is different because he's not trying to kill Renfrey. Yeah, and I feel until, like that comes across. Yeah, and then there's a point where he's like, okay, she's not going to stop. I have to do something. And Which then she he, tells him, to be fair, she doesn't really lie to him much. No, she doesn't. She's like, if I start, I'm not going to stop. Yeah, and neither does he because he yep. takes her out real fast after he's like, I have to kill you now. Yeah, and I feel like that comes across really well. He's like, yeah. well, fuck these assholes yeah. who think that they can kill me, LOL. Yeah. Cute. It's always, it. I don't understand. One of the things I talked about while streaming the third game was just mm. like, why do people keep taking fights with him? It's like when re- thugs are like, hey, Batman, what are you going to do about that's, it? That's very Hercules and Xena, too. Yeah, and like, it's Xena just will like, walk into a bar, and all these like random farmer dudes will be like, Mah! and she's like, LOL, I literally have a weapon I can throw yeah. that will kill you while I sip my beer. Yeah. Like, I don't... It's just like, why do you keep picking fights with this person? Like, I get like, right. oh, what if I'm the person that does it? It's like, yeah, what if... <laughs> But also, well, are also, you willing to do that? How likely is that? Like, you've heard about how many people they've, like, in Batman's case, just snapped limbs of, yep. and just gotten out of precarious situations with yeah. Geralt or Xena or whatever. There's a lot of murder. Yeah, you just they've just killed people. There's some dead dudes. Xena throws a lot of people like through walls and like into poles. Oh, also, and I'm like talking that about dead. that. I just realized something hmm. that makes more sense. So the episode with the Striga, hmm. when they're fighting and Geralt's like being thrown against walls and all kinds of stuff. And he's like barely getting hurt at all in the beginning. Mm-hmm. I, one of the things like I was watching interviews with everybody, basically Henry Cavill talked about like the, the easiest way he tells people about Geralt. He's like, he's based like Geralt's basically a super soldier that's bred to hunt monsters and mm-hmm. it's like that makes sense that makes sense yeah and he's like well, they were talking it's about like well, captain america but cooler yeah um but one of the things is like oh they use potions to enhance themselves even further one of the potions like uh he's talking about in the books like there's a scene where Geralt's talking to somebody he's standing perfectly still because he had just taken a potion and he doesn't want the person to know how fast he can move oh. after taking it so that's one of the that's things super is, cool. yeah is so if one of the things i was like oh you know what that fight with the striga makes mm-hmm. way more sense in the beginning because he's getting hurt but he's not really reacting to any of right. it it probably made him more durable and deadened yeah. his senses a little bit well, so and if he he's thinking i hurt. just have to stay alive yeah until dawn he would take a potion that made it to where he could take more punishment and maybe right. not feel it as much. That makes total sense. And then when he wakes up and he realizes, like, he's, like, they're both after they, you know, get knocked out from mm-hmm. falling through the floor. And he wakes up and he goes to try to take another potion and his shit is all broken. And he's like, fuck. You know. Right. And then he starting, like, finally starts to, like, really get hurt. And he's like, oh, God. Yeah. 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 It's like you can tell that he has more endurance yeah than in other situations yeah and and it makes sense right like there's mm-hmm. a there's a strategy behind all of hmm. those choices and the fight with the striga is cool too because yeah. he like takes hits gives hits mm-hmm. but it's not like and then there was one shattering blow it's like a genuine fight mm-hmm. with two people who are essentially super powered people well the striga is just a cursed person and it looks uh, but it like can like jump super far and oh, yeah, it also yeah. endures a huge amount of punishment. So like well, it's, it's got some powers. Yeah, because it's I mean, it's cursed by magic. Right. But the f- weird thing is so the cool thing is that the developers, when they made the first game, they were like, we want the cinematic that plays when you start the game to be that mm-hmm. that episode, basically, where Geralt hunts the Striga. Mm-hmm. Or doesn't hunt it because right. he doesn't want to kill it. Fights the Striga? Yeah. yeah. Try, cures the Striga of its yeah. curse. Um, because it's a good... Striga? Striga? I think it's... I don't know if it actually matters. I don't, I don't remember how they, how they say it. But in the game, the way CDPR, the developer shortened, mm-hmm. um, their art style... Also, A, Witcher 1 Geralt looks ugly. So it makes more sense when people are like, ah, oh, mutant, da 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 Like, he oh, doesn't okay. look attractive two and three make him look much better and then obviously the show has henry cavill mm. you would have to do a lot to his face to make him ugly yeah 
One you of those should've... things is CGIing his lip so it doesn't look like he has a mustache. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> that was horrifying. It was re- like... And it was really bad. Because it looks like they just brought his face... I don't like know. Like they literally took like a smudging tool and like Microsoft Paint. It's weird. And went like... Me, 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 me. And then... Yeah, I don't know. My nine-year-old nephew could do better than that. Yeah, it was I weird. Um, but anyway, um, one of the things in the game is they made the Striga like really big and muscular and mm. stuff. I think I like the way the show did it more, where it's like this weird, like long, like hands, long limbs, skinny, super creepy, gross-looking thing. Yeah, with its um umbilical cord still attached which and everything. is such a good touch the first time i saw it, i was like what the fuck is that and then i was like that's the fucking umbilical cord yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was awesome yeah. it was very cool and such a good touch too because she's literally like a, a rotted fetus that grew up life. yeah um so like why wouldn't it have an umbilical cord attached yeah. to it as it's like this like rotted horrifying thing. Yeah. I love that. It's and it so also makes gruesome. sense why it would be strong still because it's cursed by magic. It doesn't right. need to look strong. It just is. It's one of those things. I get very frustrated mm-hmm. that certain types of people have to be covered in muscle and they're strong. And then certain other types of people, mm-hmm. women, have to still not look at all that muscular and then, you know, oh, well, then they can have these, like, feats of strength that demonstrate mm. their strength. I'm like, yeah. why does why is Superman buff? Why is he buff? I don't Because they, they drew him that way. Right. I'm like, that's ridiculous. Well, when why, he was... Why would he even work out? Well, he doesn't. He just looks like that. Well, I mean, I assume he, like... I, I think assume it... he, like, has to try to do some of the things he does. So, like, when he's, like, holding up a building or whatever bullshit he's doing. Like, I assume <laughs> that, like... You know, takes a little bit of muscle work. Yeah, he's exerting himself. But, like, but... you know, like, in truth... What's Superman's gym? Who's his trainer? <laughs> the world. The world, like, but it, but for real, like, I don't know. Does like, Superman go home and make a bunch of protein shakes? Like, what's what's happening? I don't know. You can't uh, you can't tell me. Can't ask me because I don't know. You know, whereas like Wonder Woman is like, has been played by these like lithe, long limbed yeah. women whose muscles you can barely see. Yeah, and I'm like. At least in this sense, it's a creature that's right. like cursed. And I'm like... Because in the game, yeah. she's like muscular and stuff. And yeah. I was like, that doesn't track. Because if it's a creature that was basically in a womb that's bas- petrified and then it clawed its way out of it, why would it grow massive muscles? Right. So like when I saw that... Like when she can't find things to eat, is she just like lifting weights? Yeah, it like, doesn't... Like that's weird. Yeah. Like I, I understand... I like that her arms and legs look kind of spindly and yeah. like spider-like. Yeah, and creepy. gangly and gross. Yeah. She looks like an alien from the movie Alien, kind yeah. of. Yeah, and I'm kind of... I'm into that. Yeah. And, and this idea that like she's more face, like head and face and jaw and mouth yeah. than she is like limb and body. Yeah. Because at this point, all she does is eat people. Yeah. And she gross. does eat that one dude. Well, she it's rips awesome. him open. I mean, I assume she eats his heart and liver uh, we just, when she rips him open, unless she's just in the habit of leaving food around. It cuts real quickly to Geralt, so I don't <laughs> yeah. know. Who knows? Maybe she took a few seconds to just... Yeah, just grabbed him. Yep. But, um, yeah, no, I like the art design of the monsters and stuff in the show a lot. Yeah, that Kiki Mora looked really cool. Yeah. And that was another thing is, like, they... I feel bad for that one monster that one asshole killed for no reason. He just wanted Fuck food. Because even Geralt's like, if we'd given it some food, it just would have left us alone. Because one of his things is, <gasps> like, he doesn't kill monsters that right. don't pose a threat. Right, because why would you do that? Yeah, there's no reason to. You're just killing something for right. you're nothing. Just, you're just being a dick. Yeah. And I like that he's like, why, why are you a dick? You're a dick. Yeah. You could have just given me a piece of bread and I would have left. Yeah, he was just hungry. Like, why are you such an asshole? It didn't even look that threatening. It just looked weird. Right. They were like, Ugh! and I'm like, I don't know. Your face looks weird. But you also kind of look like a hungry puppy that learned to stand on its hind legs. So sad. Yeah. And then a guy eats him, shits himself, and then somebody cuts his throat. So. (laughs) You know what? Karma. Yeah. Destiny, baby. (laughs) (laughs) His destiny was to die while shitting himself. Uh, I mean, that's how Elvis went out, so. Well, he's not as cool as Elvis. He didn't have bell-bottom pants, (laughs) babe. I mean, you don't know that. We only saw him when he was traversing the wild. Yeah, he did, side. and he didn't have bell bottoms <laughs> on, so not as cool as Elvis. That's fair. 
But yeah, no, I like the monster design and stuff. The dragon CGI is like meh, it's but like, like whatever. But it wasn't bad. It just wasn't Great. as good. And I think somewhat because I feel like the other monsters were a mixture of CGI and prosthetics. Yeah. And for me, that's always that's always going to win every time. I yeah. mean, any time you have some some really great prosthetics and you combine that with well done CGI, then, yeah. you know, you've kind of hit the peak of what's going to carry well on film. Yeah. Um, and the Striga was at least partially practical because there are scenes that are like close up. And I'm like, oh, no, that's like a real thing that you physically built. Yeah. As opposed to a CGI thing. Or a person in a suit. Right. That's what I mean. Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like a, a human. Yeah. Are you you got to go soon? Yeah. Yeah, I should probably go. Okay. I mean, this is a little bit rushed, but, you know, well, you can always talk about more. Because we didn't talk about the show as extensively as maybe you would have wanted. It's true. We could always have multiple episodes. Yeah. But that's a lot of the stuff about The Witcher. Allie's got to go to campus you Goodbye. might need to be yeah you mean i might need to start moving yes i have to go goodbye okay. thank you that, that's ali ali Macchia on twitter if you want to follow her about rants on school and stuff i'm nico otherwise no why is the auto zo- focus on what the fuck it's all out of focus what is this anyway i'm nico otherwise known as nico all powerful we'll see you guys in the next podcast you know where you can find it google play stitcher itunes spotify all that good stuff Podbean. Uh, thanks for watching. You can find me on Twitter at Nico Powerful, N I C C O P O W E R F U L, Twitch TV slash Nico All Powerful, N I C C O A L L P O W E R F U L, and YouTube.com slash Nico All Powerful, N I C O A L P O W E R F U L. Before I go, I want to say thank you to our patrons Achilles, Patrick, Cert, Quinn, and T Rex with a Shotgun. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to the Patreon at $5. I appreciate it. I love you all. I hope you guys. Um, who are just listening as well, uh, just audio only listeners are having a good rest of your day slash weekend whenever you listen to this. And yeah, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for supporting and we'll see you next time. Peace.